previously on High Adventure. But one thing that jumps out at you with your incredibly high perception roll is that you see not a hawk, but you see an eagle, like in a, a big eagle, normal sized eagle, not magical um, <laughs> eagle, but just a, a big eagle that's perched um, on not where you guys are working, but the other like, you know, rise up into the mountains and it's perched on this like outcropping. And it's just been up there like every once in a while it'll get up and like fly around this little valley and swoop down and grab like a mouse and then it goes back up and it just watches you. Okay, I, I attempt to cast uh, Animal Friendship. I then ritually cast um, Speak with Animals. Okay, you do. It's just calmly watching you. How long does Animal Friendship last? Uh, 24 hours. Oh, okay. All right, so after your, your ritual of casting, you you feel like you have the ability to speak. I speak with this majestic creature and ask him why he's been watching us all day. You are interesting. I do not <laughs> see people here in long times. Have you seen any of the large and I can't remember the name right now the, the white ones I call them the the large beasts with the white fur yes yes they are high up have you seen any low here recently around us no but they might come your people make noise all day long <laughs> You go back to your people. I'll wait here, but tell people not to shoot me with arrows when I come. The eagle like kind of hops up and then it jumps off and, and flies over. Um, I, I it offer him lands the on the edge of the wagon. Okay, I offer him the fish. He like leans over and takes it with his beak, and just throws it up in the air and kind <clears> of <throat> takes part of it and picks at it. it. Just gets at it, and I I. I... I can't remember all the exact words, but I relay what the eagle spoke to me about and the, the white ones, and that they're probably gonna, I mean, they probably already know we're coming. Um, make insight checks. Okay. As Cade is relaying this to you. Oh yeah, baby. That is 18? 25. Six. Oh, nice. Okay. So. <laughs> So, Cho, you're listening to your brother explain what the eagle was saying. While while you're listening to your brother explain this, um, Shao, you notice that the eagle is, like, watching Cade explain this to you. And as Cade's explaining each of these things, like, the eagle's looking back and forth at each of you as if, like, he's a person in the conversation, like, <laughs> understanding what Cade's saying. And he's, he's like... And he like occasionally nods. You know how like people nod when they're he like the eagle does that. Like when, when your brother explains something. Now I want to make a point. The reason why this is odd is because your brother is not speaking in beast speech right now. He's speaking in Sakurin or Nicene to you, but the eagle is like acting as if it's following along in the conversation. Which so it's is, understanding. Yes, that's what you seem to notice. So Kate mm. kind of finishes okay. explaining this, and the eagle like, can I can I walk slowly towards the bird and then you say can. to him? He he looks at you like for what your intent. What is your name? You you ask what is your name? What language do you say that in? So you say, what is your name in Nicene? Mm -hmm. The eagle's mouth opens, its beak opens, and a voice comes out of it. And this is not in beast speech, it's in Nicene. Oh. And it says, my name is White Eagle, and you should not be here. Between the rise of the Kimrog Empire and the tumultuous demon wars, there was an enigmatic era. 
a time when brave souls traversed oceans and continents in search of glory, riches, and power. Let us tell you of the days of high adventure. Hello and welcome back to High Adventure. For us, it's been a minute, but for those binge watching this epic show, um, hope you enjoyed the recap. The brothers Zen have had a very strange situation. Um, an eagle that uh, was befriended um, through the the druidic powers and and beast speech and animal ken of Cade had come to the camp. And as, Cade, as you were explaining to your brothers, uh, Shao and Cho, as well as uh, Juan Gozo, your, your Borean guide, um, you notice these peculiar behaviors from the eagle as if it could understand what you were saying. And as your brother Shao approached it and asked what its name was, its mouth opened and a, a voice came out of it. And the voice speaking in Nicene spoke to you and introduced itself as White Eagle. And it says, you should not be here. You notice that for the ever so briefest moment, when it said this, when, when the eagle's mouth was open and this like humanoid kind of voice came out of it, that everyone around could understand. And, and, the eagle's eyes kind of stared straight ahead and then its mouth closed and it kind of resumed a more animalistic appearance. Though its eyes still kind of dart back and forth between everyone as if studying your reaction. Uh, I turn sharply as I'm sure most people just did uh, at this uh thing that just happened and I speak in I speak in Druidic and I say are you the same as me the eagle nods its head and then its mouth opens again stays open and this humanoid voice again in Nicene speaks and says Perhaps we are the same. Though this eagle is my familiar. It is not me. Uh, <clears throat> I am I... far away from you. I am not from Nicaea. And you notice its eyes look over at like kind of past where the three of you and Juan Gozo are to kind of the, the, the distant background where um, your, your Sakurin and um, Iraqi uh, laborers are, are kind of working. And it, it looks around and it says... I have sent my familiar to Nicaea. I myself cannot come here, but there is something and some people I seek. Are you are you trapped or you just choose not to leave your 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 place? Uh, both. I am trapped, but I would not leave my place. So instead, I managed to send my familiar who I can still maintain contact with. Are you up the mountain in, in, in the area where we're heading? I am up a mountain, but
but not where you are. My familiar has surveyed this island and many of the islands around it. Is there but, maybe... Go ahead. But it must be careful. Of course. If it is sure. killed there, I could only resummon it to me where I am. Perhaps there's some sort of agreement that we could, or alliance we could form to help, uh, help each other mutually. Your kind. I have seen them before. You and your brothers. What land do you come from? The land of Sakura. And his kind. The dark one. And you see Mwangozo, <clears throat> he kind of like looks up at, at the eagle with a raised eyebrow and, and he, he says <clears throat> I am Mwangozo. My homeland is Borea, but I have been here in Nicaea for quite uh, many years. The eagle closes its mouth and and for like a few moments it kind of acts more like an eagle. Like it, it uses its beak to like fix its feathers and, and you know preen and stuff and then it it kind of looks back at you and then it its head goes upright and its mouth opens again and the voice comes back through it says what sort of help would you seek What do you think, brothers? What kind of help do we seek? We need safe passage into the mountain. We need to understand these beasts. From what I have observed, these beasts are part of a, a species that was not originally from Nicaea. They are mountain dwellers because most of the lowlands, the climate does not suit them. <clears throat> the eagle looks past again into the background. What of those fair-skinned folk who build your camp in the distance? The ones that are not like you or Mongozo? The Iraqis? They are Iraqi? Yes. Those humans? Yes. They are native to this island in this country. But if they are Iraqi, is their homeland not Arakazin? They established this city here on this island, I forget how many years ago. Can they go to their homeland? I think they choose to live here. They establish their colony here. Do you trust them? They have shown us incredible hospitality and trust. I do trust them. They are simple people. You you say that they have been at this island for some time. Yes. <clears throat> I would do you a boon, a favor, in return for you acquiring information from one of the Iraqi who you trust.
Would you agree to this? As long as it doesn't place them in danger. It is just information. But it is better that you acquire the information and discern whether it is truth or lies. And then tell me. Or do not reveal who and what I am and bring the Iraqi here and I will just listen. But the question that must be asked are very specific. I would ask them of you, and he, he, the eagle turns its head to you, Cade. I would ask them of you in Druidic, and you would ask the Iraqi person, and I would hear his response. <clears throat> okay. So this, this bird right now is speaking to him in Druidic, correct? Just so I can clarify that. He's speaking to no, he three. switched back it to Nicene. So you guys, oh, okay. so we can I mean, all understand three, the conversation. Yeah, you three plus one Gozo are all there. <laughs> you can hear and and understand what he's proposing. Let's say, right. Um, so it's it's yeah. So it's really more just four of us right there speaking to White Eagle. Right. It's really more that White Eagle would would want to basically ask you the questions to ask the Iraqi person. Yeah. Right. Without revealing that who he actually yeah. is. Right. Can I can I ask him can I ask him a question? Since we're on the You you're right there. Yeah. It's just you three yeah. and we'll go though. So I so I I kind of look over to the bird and say, what is your purpose here? You, you ask why yeah. I have sent my familiar to Nicaea. Correct. I sent my familiar to find something and to find someone. Hmm. And my familiar arrived in this place. And how long have you been here? How long has my familiar been here? Yes. Several months. Perhaps almost half of a year. Okay. Uh, it, it is... It is difficult to go from one island to another. Though, though my eagle can fly for great distances, some of the islands are very far away. And unless there is a means of, of finding some form of land in which to stop and rest between islands, even the smallest rock or, or you know, flying alongside a ship from one island to another, it, it is difficult to explore all of the islands. There are so many in Nicaea that it is difficult to explore all of them. We can, we can offer you assistance in that if you are able to assist us here in what we seek. And we might be seeking the similar thing that you're seeking. So it would make sense for us to strike an accord and help each other out. I believe that one of our students would be a good candidate for someone that we trust to speak with. Mm -hmm. One who, who would know of their homeland. This is the most important. One of the Iraqi who would know of their homeland. Uh, not one who has only known this island and only known of Nicaea. I, uh, Shall I, go ahead. Can I, I, I lean, I, I kind of face away from the bird and I look at the brothers and say, our uh, our partner, our host, would be the most knowledgeable one. She has the highest, I believe, age versus all the people that we've met so far. The landowner. You're, but that's you're assuming correct. that. But yeah. that's assuming that she's be willing to come traverse all the way up here 
No, that would have be this my conversation. Concern. That would take too much time right now. Uh, we could see which of our, which of uh, your students here has the most knowledge of their homeland, and try and answer some of these questions that he, that White Eagle will have. So you guys, as as brothers, you know that uh, most of your students are are young Iraqi who who you know who grew up in Nicaea and specifically on on this island of Tizia. Um, you do know, or rather, you do you know you do remember that you know when you guys first kind of moved to the island. Um, you met several kind of more prominent people. Um, you know that uh, the your your patroness, for example, the the uh, the the widow Gisvomai, who who basically you know set up the 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 farm sharing program with you guys and allowed you to to kind of set up your your martial arts school using like her barn and stuff and, and you know basically the land on which you live she she's yeah. an elder um and then you also remember that you know you guys were introduced to um the the water priest um uh, the iraqi water priest zebais um so you know that there are a couple of the elders who might have a better idea about the the History. Rocky homeland. The homeland. May I ask this? Since your familiar is already with us here, can he accompany us into the mountain to scout and to see what we can find? And then he can come with us back to the village. I do not believe the elders will be able to make the journey. The 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 eagle says I will do this favor for you if you give me your word upon your honor that you will find out the information that I need to know. I will I will return to you to this town of of people. Indeed, I will make this agreement. Brothers, my word is not what this one seeks. I swear by the moon that I will honor this agreement. The eagle nods. The voice of, of White Eagle says then then says I will I will fly to the top of these mountains and scout it out. I would suggest that you focus your men on securing your camp because it could be a dangerous night for you if the white furs know that you are here. But if I am to scout, I must go now before the light eludes me. We will secure the camp then. The eagle nods and and you see it's, it closes its mouth and like the eagle kind of goes back into a more natural animalistic form and it, it kind of flutters its its wings and then it jumps up and just takes off and starts flying kind of off in the distance and then it sort of soars and and it sort of does this climb up and then it glides and then it climbs up a little bit more so as as it's flying away Mongozo then turns to you guys like after it's you know a couple hundred feet away Mongozo turns to you and he says uh, I must ask have you have you ever known of such a thing when an animal uh, becomes the host of a more powerful person is this a common thing where you come from? I look over at Cade. I was gonna ask. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I've uh, heard in my druidic circle meetings, basically, if I've heard of like, you know, wizards and 
other druids that can do sort this sort of thing or magic users. So uh, you, I'm going to say make an arcana check. Okay. First roll. God, that's not great. <laughs> uh, that's a three. Uh, you still have the attunement of our marker, <clears throat> don't you? I, I use it. In a, used I use it. Yeah, but I mean, it lasts for a certain amount of time. Has that time elapsed? Yeah, I don't it's think just, so. It's just, you just get one roll. He blew it. Okay. So, so Wangozo <laughs> says, in my homeland, uh, the, the priests who are like you, and he gestures to you, Cade, he says, they have, uh, some of them can transform into a beast. Uh, some of them are able to hear the whispers of the ancestors in nature. I have some mobility with both of them. But uh, from what I know, they, uh, they can sometimes speak through their animal spirit or hear through it, or see through it. But it must usually be close. Is this not your understanding as well, Cade? I My... suppose I question, how is it possible that this white eagle druid can speak through his eagle from such great distances from far away because the next closest island is the i think the the one that the three of you and your followers came from and even this island is five miles perhaps away from tizia in in my experience i haven't really run into too many other uh, people as myself that have that type of ability to speak such long distances to their familiars. He must be very powerful. He did say he was trapped. So Did he not say he was on the mountain, just on a different section, different side? Diff I think a different island. What he said. Correct me if I'm wrong. But... Mongozo says, Well, I suppose we shall see. But in the meantime, I think that you should establish some defenses around this camp. I am Agreed. going to set some some little alarms around the perimeter outside of the camp, just in case something is to try to sneak up on us. And you see he begins reaching into his bag and he, he's, he's pulling out uh, twine, like a mm -hmm. big wad of twine. And you notice he has these little, these tiny little bells. And he, he kind of walks off into the distance. Uh, okay. So you <clears throat> estimate that there's about two hours until dark, right? Like it's it's mm -hmm. evening, you know, you still got some some sunlight. But then again, you've got, you know, mountains and, you know, the sun's going to be, the sun's already kind of setting. So what, what do you guys focus on for the two hours remaining? What do you have your guys, what do you have your, your men do? Your, I shouldn't say men, your people, uh, your mix of Iraqi and Sakurin um, students. What do you have them doing? And what do you guys do? Uh... Is the ground like loose earth around where we're at? Because I think we're at the base of the mountain, correct? Yeah. So your base camp is at the at the base okay. of the mountain. Just so you're, yeah. you know, on that south side of the mountain mm -hmm. where you know, like, because you were able to figure out this is where um, <clears throat> original mining expedition had set up. And you could see the original, you know, trail yeah. that went up the mountain that they carved in, right? So mm -hmm. you know where that cave entrance is up the mountain. Mm -hmm. But your your guys 
they had been formerly working on clearing that that that, that cave trail. Yeah, right. So, okay. so the the fantastic picture behind Keith is is effectively, you know, huge, enormous, tons yeah. of of rock material that blocked this path, and they yeah. had been working on excavating that. But now, you know, your camp is not really even built. Secure. So, yeah. what do you want to do with the remaining two hours? If we secure the perimeter, then we can work from yeah. outside in. Yeah, I'm gonna basically. Well, Gozo is setting alarms around the perimeter yeah. at different intervals. Yeah. Um, do you guys pull away your workers from clearing the the rubble, and and focus on setting up the camp and like how? What do you guys want to do? Uh, I mean, how many how many people do we actually need to do the setup of the camp? I mean, like. Four well, people? I mean, just to finish finish building, you know, like tents, and then yeah. you know, gathering stuff for fires and and like how do you want to kind of do that yeah um i i still would want some people to continue to clear the path because i'd rather have a clear path than not do that yeah. so maybe a handful can go do that camp thing uh while the rest continue to work and then we'll just swap out so the pe people that finish the camp stuff can go back and relieve them and then we should be about nighttime by then so then everybody can rest yeah so whatever Whatever hours we have left, I'd rather do that. So, it's the four of us plus eight, correct? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. twelve of us. Yeah. So, I will assist. Yeah. With so with maybe uh, three more. Okay. Continue. Yeah. And then everybody okay. else is working on setting up fires and tents yeah. and all that stuff. I think we. Yeah, should I got build. something specific I'm going to do. I'd like to build. Uh, if I have two hours, I'd like to get one or two men to dig deep trenches. In order for, uh, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of that. You got it, brother. I'll take care of that. I wasn't yeah, sure I'm, if you could work amongst I'm, I'm gonna, rocks. Yeah, I was just waiting. I was just waiting to get my piece in. That's all. Um, I'm just basically gonna create like an Alamo Alamo type um, wall around us, and then also, so we have the wall. I'm gonna make that ten feet high. So I'm taking. I'm using mold earth to do all this, putting that uh, on top of that so it's got 10 feet and then behind on the inside of the wall there's going to be another five foot like ledge so we have like i can stand up and then we can kind of you know defend from a top of wall basically mold earth is perhaps one of the most underrated cantrips on the planet <laughs> um <laughs> You break the <clears throat> by instantly excavating mirth, uh, earth, moving it along the ground and depositing it at five feet away. Um, and you, you do this in a relatively quick amount of time because you could do um, huge chunks of this. Um, <clears throat> the area that you've dug out to create the wall then becomes in effect um, trenches, which creates difficult terrain. So I'm going to say that you spend mm -hmm. all two hours doing that to create this perimeter wall of, of earth and rocks. Yes. Um, yes. Shao, you and your three guys continue basically almost up until the dark. I'm going to say that you make enough of a dent after this whole day of doing this where people could now climb over the rocks and get to the other side and walk up but you have not cleared enough to be able to pull a wagon or animals up over that terrain yet okay <clears throat> you made progress but mm -hmm. uh and then show your you in in kind of organizing the camp and getting everybody set up uh, the supply crates, you kind of cordon the supply crates off into, uh, you know, you kind of circle the wagons effectively, well, not wagons, but, you know, you, you basically have your supplies and your wagons kind of um, strategically, you know, protected inside of the wall and the, the trench that your brother has created. Um, and right about the time that the sun is setting, you know, you guys have a cooking fire going. Your your people are eating. You have a couple guys on watch. Um, 
white eagle you see white eagle like return kind of gliding down in a in a spiral and you know he gets to to kind of where your camp is and he sort of lands on top of the central cluster of crates with all of your mining supplies and he he kind of um sort of like shakes his feathers a little bit and settles in and then he he kind of waits there i offer the eagle some meat he he leans forward to take the meat and in druidic he he says uh, we should go to a, a place where your men won't understand me speaking just nod and uh, I, I look at my brothers and and then ask them to come with me okay and we uh, you know find a spot outside the, the barricades okay so once you're kind of a little bit separated from the rest of the men um, White Eagle you know looks around his mouth opens up and then the voice of White Eagle comes <clears throat> Eagle uh, speaks to you guys in Nicene and he says two of the white birds were out they were not near the mine entrance they were on the other side of the mountain but they were out and they were moving large stones rolling them in some cases in other cases picking them up and moving them they came around to the western bend and stack these large stones up and then that that's what they seemed to be doing over the course of the last few hours and and the eagle like kind of looks up and, and says basically at the top of that peak on the western side so not right mm -hmm. overhead so basically imagine you know you you guys have this is a mountain range right but the one yeah. particular big mountain that you guys have kind of found where this mining expedition went, the camp is at the base of the mountain on the south side of the mountain, right? So if this can is the mountain and where I am is the south side, they're, you're back here. The mm -hmm. west side is on this side, the east side, the north side. The north side of that mountain heads out towards the sea. Got it? Okay. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the south side where you are, if you keep going south, would head back to that lake in the middle of the island. Yep. Um, so that's your orientation, right? So he's saying that these two white firs were, were moving boulders and rocks to the west side. It's The only significance of that to you guys, that's not anywhere near the mine entrance, but mm -hmm. it is where you guys came through between the mountains in that mountain trail. That's yeah. where you came through between yeah. the western side of this big mountain and then the rest of that mountain range. That was kind of like the mountain path. Yeah, they're, right? they're setting up an ambush for when we leave, sounds like. White, Eagle, we White Eagle nods and says, I, I think that is what they were doing. Now, I only saw two of them. Can you assess I, the size of the white furs in, in reference to us? they are large the two that i saw were probably double the height of of you will they will they be taller than the ledge of our perimeter oh yes so they're probably like 12 feet tall? 12 feet 12, tall. Yeah, 12 feet tall or something like that. He says, I'm Ooh. certain that they could step right over it. But you oh. have created a nice trench and wall, so it might slow them down a bit. I've got more things to slow them down, too. Uh, right. Okay. I he, fear he that says, if we stay on the defensive, we will lose a tactical advantage. He says, are you... Are you certain that engaging with the white furs is what you wish to do? Is there any other way to reoccupy the mine? I do not know. 
I have not spoken to them. I don't know if they're capable of that sort of communication, but they are more intelligent than a simple beast. Mm -hmm. I would rather not harm them if we can avoid it. From the, from the sound of it, brother, it doesn't seem seem like that's a course of action. They're setting up to ambush us when we leave. Take our goods, take our horses. There's a, there's a reason why they're setting up the ambush. Yeah, they're so they're not. They're they're guarding something. So obviously, it's something more than what they they require to live and survive in this area. Obviously, they're protecting something. And then I look at the white uh, the white eagle and I say would you be kind enough to divulge what you're looking for so we have an understanding what you're looking for and if it's in relationship to ours maybe we can help each other further because we need to understand what you're looking for to help you i am looking for a group of people that's it just people. left my land and stole something very important okay an artifact Yes. An item of incredible power. And do you think that this perhaps may be in the cave dwelling that we're trying to reach? I do not think so. Okay. What I seek, that which was stolen, is in the possession of the thieves who stole it. Right. I seek okay. those thieves, but I have not found them anywhere on this island or any of the what six, <laughs> uh, what or any of the six adjacent islands. Oh. What race of people are you? Are these thieves? They're well. One is you... one is a human. Mm-hmm. Where does he one, hail from? One can look like a human, but he can change his appearance to be anyone or anything, really. Mm -hmm. And the third is... I do not know if you would know what is a Nizak. Do I? Uh, no. You guys don't have Nizak on Sakura. We never heard he, of him. He says the Nizak are most commonly found on a Rakazine. I see. They I are like a man, but they have no hair of any kind on their bodies. And their skin is gray. They are tall, but also uh have long limbs. They are usually very strong. Where does the human come from that you mentioned? It is difficult for me to explain these things because what you know of the world around you is is only your experience in the place where you come from and only the time that you have been here in Nicaea. <clears throat> you, you have seen now because of Juan Gozo that there are other peoples in the in the world, yes? Correct. The people, the thieves that I look for are other peoples who you would not have known about in in your land, Sakura, just as they would not have known about you. They well, would I... know, they would not know, the thieves would not know what is a Sakuran or what is a Borean, but they might know what is an Iraqi. It is why I must have you ask these questions to an elder of their people. Okay. Okay. Can I, I look at White Eagle really quick and I say would that object that you're looking for, that artifact it will, would it be valuable to these people that stole it and are they able to use it? 
the reason why I ask this is what if we create a trap or a lure to draw out the ones that have it by give you giving us some details about it where we can say maybe make a plot or a plan to expose this through the conversation of what you're asked these questions are being asked or pretend that we are also seeking this treasure that we can put out there and allow it to draw attention to us and then maybe that will expose those people and give you a better chance of singling them out and i look at cho and i say brother this is your expertise you can provide us with more intel with your experience of disguise and as then, well as if i can find the thieves guild i can ask questions there as well i see your mind and you you share many wise ideas oldest brother i must be cautious in what i share not because i do not trust you you seem to be honorable but because the knowledge i have could be very dangerous if it affected the wrong sort of change i i feel that once i have answers to the questions i have i may be able to share more with you but for now i will, I will honor the agreement we made which was to provide you with information alas uh i could send my servant to fly again in the night if you're familiar would be able to do that that would be of great help if they tried to attack us at night and he was able to give us some sort of war warning that would help immensely indeed I will do this. I want to go ahead with the cover of night. Brother Shao, would you like to accompany me to the cave? I want to see what they are protecting. I want to see how many there are. Uh, I don't know. You, brother. I don't know if I relayed this when I came back, when I checked out the cave, but the cave entrance is blocked. Well, you could go into you, you could go into the mine entrance, but yeah. there there is a purposeful cave in. It was yeah. definitely sabotaged because remember you yeah. saw you saw that the ports were ripped down by force, and, yeah. and that's where you also found like a patch of of white fur. So that yes. that I relay excavation, that. that amount of excavation, yeah. it's not as big as the the rock fall that blocked the path up there, but you would need at least like six dudes working for a whole day. Yeah. Yeah. And you it wouldn't need, be and easy you'd at need all. tools and you'd need to rebuild those supports. Yes. It, it, would, it wouldn't be wise to go up there right now. We wouldn't so, be able to do it ourselves. There's got to be another way in then so that the, the beasts would not trap themselves inside the cave. It's possible. I didn't do that much exploring when I went up there. I'll be more than happy to, to assist, brother. Uh, we can I just make. I moves. need a better understanding of what we're dealing with. I don't want to sit here and wait for and, them to attack us. And White we, Eagle, White Eagle takes off because he he's he's going to go do a scouting mission, and and you notice as the as his mouth closes and he stops talking, the eagle kind of resumes its natural form. It again heads off into the night. Um, let's see. I feel like I Who feel like we're at handling? what? Who has animal handling? Uh, Dude. Yeah, I, I, I got a plus four on animal animal handling. All right, go ahead and make an animal handling check. Uh, let's see, animal handling. Well, I got a plus one of those. ten. Ten. One of those things where I'm not sure if it would be an animal handling or a nature check to know something about the behaviors of animals. I had a plus three, so I rolled a 17. 
whatever that means. Did way so better than as, me. as as White Eagle's eagle flies off, as the eagle flies off, it's nighttime, like dark nighttime. Yeah, yeah. You're pretty sure that eagles can't see in the dark. They're not nocturnal animals, right? But he did just say that he was going to scout things out for you guys. Yeah, well, he's going to do the best he can. Well, it sounds like maybe perhaps he's closer. Maybe he's not revealing his distance from us. Maybe he is. Close. Who knows? I know so. we have. I mean, it's kind of hard to insight check and <laughs> a voice to an animal familiar. Can we? But, um, can we do an insight check on them? I mean, would that you be... can? But it's it's kind of like what Kale said. Basically, you're. It, it's it's almost an insight of the sensibility of what's being said, and not so much the ability to judge by somewhat expression and tone okay because it's it's a voice it's a voice magically projecting through a living creature that's not that creature you know what i mean yeah yeah it's difficult um i feel like we're at a situation right now and i'm talking to my brothers um it sounds like the two of you want to go check these things out do you want to do that to yourself? Do you want me to accompany or do you, do you think I should stay? Should we split our group up? I, I think you are the master of fortifications right now. And I think if there is going to be an attack, you'd be more suited to stay here and actually protect the camp. Cho and myself, we could probably is... sneak in and out pretty quick and just get some intel and come right back. We're not there to do any kind of, uh, you know, uh, battle digging or, or 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 excavations or anything like that we're just gonna do a quick peek at this from what i get from cho so we're just gonna go there look and see if there's additional entrances if not maybe perhaps there's more booby traps that we are not going to be able to see that yeah. they have set up maybe we get an idea of what's going on and then return back to the camp okay but, but what's intriguing to me is is that he said those four people one's a changeling so they could be among us right i now. don't think i think that's a little meta we don't really know what a changeling is but we understand he's a shapeshifter of some sort um i can I, I i don't mind staying back i have more than enough at my disposal to protect the camp and the people and help fortify and ward off an attack if need be so if you guys want to go scout again, maybe find another entrance. Hopefully, I'm more than I'm more than uh, happy to go with that plan. I'll follow Cho's lead. Whatever he wants to do, I, I I'm gonna have his assist him. I will tell you this though: if you guys are out and you see, like uh, Bill, is the sky clear? It's a clear night. Uh, it is actually, yeah. There's no storm. Okay. It's been pretty clear. All right. I tell I tell my brothers if you see a storm just come out of nowhere, then you know we're under attack. Okay, that's fair that'll, that, that'll be your sign. We will make haste, brother. Let's let's get it done. <clears throat> Okay, describe to me what you were like. Are you going up the path, climbing over the rock fall, and and kind of you know, like you know what's your what's your approach? Kind of the direct approach to the to the mine entrance. Never direct, always in the shadows. We will right. stick to the shadows. We will be undetected, and we will move up the mountain, and then find workarounds. So, give me an athletics check first. Because you guys are going to climb over. It's not going to be a disadvantage, but it's just going to be a normal athletics check to climb over um, for the two of you. I have a climb. 16. Okay. 24. All right. So you guys get over without making the rock fall worse or creating like a, you know, more of a, a, of a rock fall. And now give me stealth check as you're going up the mountain trying to, you know, it, it's dark. So how are you? What's your form of illumination? 26 16 okay so you could be stealthy but how are you seeing uh 
I am. Is this the part where you realize that you don't have dark vision? <laughs> this is the part where I realized that. <laughs> I, I, you said the sky was clear. I yeah, the sky is clear and there's a moon. I'm using the moonlight to the reflection of the moonlight. I'm following the uh Okay. And uh path. Brother Shao, is that your plan as well? Yeah, I'm just not right. gonna be in the in the limelight of this of the moon. I just try to stay in the in so the, in the so you guys are moving up the path as quietly as you can, but it's slow because you don't have any illumination. I need you to both make perception checks at disadvantage because you have no light source. Three. Well done. My disadvantage is 17. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, disadvantage. I got lucky. I got an 18 and a 17. <laughs> when you're a monk and you have a beefy wisdom. All right. Um, so here's what happens. As you guys are stealthing, you get up and up and up, and you're kind of coming around the bend to where it, it gets up to that like plateau level area. And then goes, you, you see the arch area. But before you get there, um, Shao, you just barely catch this, this clump of fur on the edge of a rock up ahead, about 10 feet ahead of you. There's this small clump of fur um, that you, you see is kind of on the edge, the sharp edge of this rock before it plateaus. You see this about 10 feet ahead of you. How, clo how close is Cho to me right now? He is literally right next to you. So I put my hand out to kind of like slow stop. him down and stop him and, and say, and I just point to the direction of the clump. Yeah, you, you see a rock and you see like more mountain. You don't see the clump, but you see your brother pointing. And I, I, I don't want to speak, but I get really as close as possible with, within a whisper. And I, I say, there is something there. Muted. Muted. Or just speak louder. Okay, but I'm whispering. <laughs> yeah, <got it. laughs> Super whisper. Your, your it... audio equipment's so good that it won't allow you to whisper. It's like, nope, <laughs> the gate is up. All right, go ahead. Is it the creature, brother? Yeah, Ooh. there you go. Spooky. It, it looks like there is a white fur there, yes. <clears throat> I will. Is there, can we tell that not on the main path, but around the edges? Yeah. Is there any foot travel that we've, that we can see? Uh, areas where they could have been walking around so, so on on as you're going up on your left is mountain on your right is a sheer drop off that goes down 100 feet so unless they climbed which do, do you you know i mean you you go and look right it's possible it's, dark. it's possible that they climbed but you know you'd have to be like if you guys were gonna say if, if you had said like rewind if you had said we don't want to go up the path we want a mountain climb i'd be like all right get your climbing gear and your rope and your your metal pitons out and you climb yeah, yeah you could have done that it would have taken twice the amount of time and you would have had to make multiple uh athletics checks but it's possible but you don't see any like you don't see any clear evidence that anyone or anything climbed up the the rock face I believe I can sneak up on the fur. Ooh. Okay. You, you're you still in stealth mode, so you get a little closer. You now, as you get like five feet away from the rock, you see what your brother was pointing at. It's just, it's not even a huge clump. It's just like a little tuft of white fur that looks like it maybe rubbed up against this sharp rock and, and left a little bit of it there. As you're peeking up and over, you see the, the plateau you know, just illuminated in the moonlight, you know, about a, a 30 foot uh, area, a 30 by 30 foot area of just, you know, kind of leveled out open ground. And then you see the arched uh, timber, you know, supported entrance of the mine entrance up ahead. 
I'm actively looking for and using my senses to see if I can smell fire or see any flicker. You see no flicker of any light. You smell no fire. Um, you can't see into the mine because you don't have dark vision and you don't have a torch. You just see the, the entrance illuminated by the moonlight and then like just past that it's just pitch black. So what do you guys want to do? Not the cliff side, but the mountainous side. Would that be a more favorable climb? I, I want to work my way up and around the peak so I can see if there are any other cave entrances. Um, do you have climbing gear with you? You would have no. to go get that, number one. I mean, I would let you free climb, but I would tell you that because you have no illumination, because you have no tools, that it would be an athletics check at disadvantage, and I would have you make that check every 20 feet. And we can cause a landslide or a slide off of that mountain that which would draw attention to us. I don't know. I don't know. Or, or could we just continue to continue to just go around the perimeter of this thing? You, you could walk up or stealth up. Yeah, I'm not going to have you make another. You you both made good stealth, so you're you could go up onto the plateau and approach the the entrance if you wanted. Yeah. Or like I said, you could do what you wanted to do and climb around that up the hill up the mountain more. Um, but you you you're you're doing that in the dark with no climbing gear, so it's it would be an athletics check at disadvantage. Uh, let's see if we can go to the mouth of the cave, okay, uh, and see if we can. You guys, a little bit you know, deep. you don't just walk up and walk directly across. Correct. You have to go around the edge. You're maintaining your stealth. You get to the mouth of the cave. Um. No flickering lights, no smell. Um, you, you, you're at kind of the, you know, the edge of that, that mouth of the cave. You kind of look in. You could, I'll say, you could see five feet in because of the moonlight, but really, without a light source, you, you wouldn't see any further in. I want to, with my hand on the wall, yeah, for guidance to guide myself. I will feel my way. In. as far in as i can okay you can you you go around the corner you go into the cave uh, into the mine you can feel you go about five feet you go about 10 feet you feel the first about 10 feet in you feel a wooden strong sturdy timber you kind of continue to go around that how far in do you want to go blind I want to actually go to where the pillars have been pulled down. Okay. And see if there are just any advantage or opportunity to. Brother Shao, are you following Cho? I will remain at the entrance. Okay, so you're at the entrance. Yeah. You hear your brother going very slowly with his hand kind of, you're basically going in blind. And it, it takes a minute because he's moving at about a quarter speed, right? But you eventually, Cho, uh, I'm not going to tell you how deep in you are because it's your senses are kind of a little bit askew being that you don't really know uh, visually how far you've gone in, but you estimate somewhere in the 50 to 70 foot range based on the fact that it seems like those support timbers we're at an even interval of about 10 feet each. Uh, you you come to a point where you feel rocks, not just on the side, but in front of you. Like you kind of, your foot like kicks into one of them and then you feel in front of you and you end to the sides and kind of, you know, you feel this whole cave in. It's, it's, it's a, basically the, the tunnel stops at this cave in. Um, Shao Zen, make a perception check. Uh, 
You're muted. I got an 11. <clears throat> okay. You you wait. You have not heard anything from your brother. It's been a couple minutes. Uh, Cho, what do you do? You, you arrive at the the end of the thing. Well, I was hoping that I would be able to see something or feel something or smell something that would let me gain further access. But since this is all brother was able to find as well, I suppose this trip was in vain. Um, shout. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm too far away from him to kind of ask questions, but I just kind of like inadvertently send it to everybody here. Uh, I don't want to whisper because I don't want to. As you're thinking about that, uh, what's your armor class? Ooh, oh, here we go. 17. You get hit by two very big chunks of rock uh, from kind of the side and above you. Um, Do I hear it? Nope, not yet. <laughs> That's what his perception check was for. So you get... Um, you're going to take 18 hit points of damage as two large boulders... Uh, slam down and you get hit by two large stones and these stones are about the size of a large watermelon and okay. two of them hit you and two boulders slam down right next to you now Cho behind you you hear this you hear your brother be like ah, oh! and like you hear like and like it's so heavy that it, it makes a like a echoing kind of sound down the tunnel um, um now you, um, i will say show you were up then shao so what do you do uh sorry using, what do you do shao first oh because okay. he's the one that just got hit oh boy uh well i can't see anything obviously right uh, there's nothing for me to do i mean you know what where it came from because you just got it was it was like oh uh, uh, like your you know like your shoulder and back and head you like you just got slammed by these these big stones and you right next to you two huge boulders just collapsed and and fell down right so it's you're not okay. sure if it's like a uh a, a, like a, a rock fall, you know, sort of thing, or or what's going on? Well, it looks like it's just too isolated in my location to be just random rock fall. It definitely, so I, seems, I, yeah, it definitely doesn't seem random. It definitely seems like it's coming from, you know, the above direction. So at where you're at. Defensive stance, I think, and I kind of look up to see if I can see anything. Is there any, how far? Because I'm not like inside the cave where I was, I was standing you, you outside. Can see, and I'll say you can see 15 feet in the moonlight. You don't see anything like right above you. This clearly came from further up. The two okay. large boulders have landed and and kind of uh, rolled in front of the the mine entrance, and they're each one of them is about four or five, four to five feet tall and around um so what i mean we're we're in initiative right now so what do you do you just got surprise attacked basically okay you so, know where these things came from i i I, le le I lean into the cave and i say get out and then and i take cover in inside the cave yeah. you yell get out what else do you do if anything I'm in defensive stance just in case I I'm trying to stay far back enough where anything coming down straight down won't hit me, but I don't want to be at a disadvantage where if something does fall down more rocks that I can't get out. Okay. 
So you hear this cacophonous loud sound and, and then you hear your brother yell, get out. Using my cunning action, I retrace my steps very quickly to return to the mouth, but do you are not blind exit. at half speed, so you can get 15 feet plus another 15 feet. So you can basically move your normal speed. Is there any shrubbery inside the mouth of the cave? No. Any, nothing. So um, you, you move 30 feet. Like you use your cunning action basically to counteract the, the, the difficult terrain and the blind sight that you are currently experiencing. You get 30 feet. Um, that's your move and your cunning action. Is there any other action that you want to take? I would like to take two rocks and use them like flint and shoot and shoot a spark and see if it will provide me any additional light. Um, roll a d6, and I'm going to roll a d6. And if you are within one number of what I roll, I'll say that there are loose rocks that would allow you to do that. Four. I rolled a four. So you grab two rocks. You slam them together in the hopes that there's enough flint and steel mixed in that rock to make a spark. Um, roll a d10 and tell me what the result is. Nine. <sighs> um, Bless you. Thank you. You you slam these rocks together. No sparks. Um, you guys, top of the round. I'm gonna make a roll. You hear two more huge sounds and smaller sounds cascading outside. Um, Cho, you're too far away, but Shao. Um, you hear more rock fall and, and so there's like two more big boulders that slam down and, and like the sound of about maybe five or six more medium sized and maybe a dozen smaller sized rocks filling in and, and even like the trickling sound of like pebbles and gravel and, and, and sand and dirt. How, how oops cured is the cave entrance now it is now three quarters covered okay. so it is your turn so i i i jump out and i, I yell again while i do that Make an jump. acrobatics check because um, you get out get out yeah you you're you're basically blind right now you got no light so you're trying to jump through a crack that's about maybe two feet well 23 helps Okay, so you you kind of climb and do you you kind of do a vault through and roll through the crack, and and you feel, as you're rolling through, it's like you're getting rained on by like little rocks. You don't take any damage, but like little rocks and sand and shit gets in your face and eyes and stuff. But you roll out. Uh, I have a question. And, Could is yeah. the distance that we're at from the cave opening to the camp? How far is that? down and over so 30 feet 100 about 130 feet around and about a hundred feet down so if someone would yell would that it, be audible enough to reach yeah okay so could that I mean, noise you're, of that you're, in, you're up against rock so it would pretty it's much echo, echo. okay um, with all this noise could be heard down it's going to be yeah show you were up you heard more rock fall you heard your brother yell get out again i'm moving to the entrance as quickly as possible and in a voice that is not my own i yell out white eagle okay um so you move 30 plus your dash action um, you're going to have to make a acrobatics roll at disadvantage because basically the rock falls covering 
the entrance. Uh, 19. At disadvantage? At disadvantage. I rolled a 14 and a 20. Wow. All right. You. So wait, 14 plus six, it's actually 20. Okay. So you you are not trapped inside the mine. You you basically are able to do what you're, you, you kind of do like the Indiana Jones where like the rocks are coming down on you. You roll out just as two more big boulders collapse and now the front of the mine is blocked. Um, which brings us back to um, Cho. No, sorry, Shao. What's your armor class? 17. So one. But I'm in patient defense, so yep, I'm ready to go. Yeah, but you're being attacked by something that you can't see. So does patient defense count is the real question. Well, patient defense is dodge action as a bonus action on my turn. So I guess would that be... But you'll be bonus actioning that. Okay. Yeah. So here's here's the scoop. Huh. So I, I need to re-roll for them. One fail, and if the success fails at disadvantage. So even at disadvantage, I rolled a 13 and a 16. So the 13 plus 6 is still going to hit. So you're going to take six more points of damage show uh wow only one hit um 18 armor class yep you are gonna take 11 points of damage again another large rock just slams into your body almost knocking you to the ground um you guys are you know, you're basically on the plateau, which is kind of out in the open. And rocks just rain down from above you. From where, you can't really tell because it's out of your sight line. Um, smash cut, Cade, you're down in the camp. You hear the sounds of rocks, <clears throat> big rocks, like a rock slide. Mm-hmm. Do I sense any, uh, you know, it's from above. Fuck it. Um, I cast, you know daylight. where your brothers went. I cast daylight above the camp. <gasps> <laughs> OP much. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what daylight does. Holy uh, shit. Let's see what that rain is. Bro, that's yeah. straight up LED lights right now. <laughs> So it's, if it's, I can see, I'm killing one of these things. Foot radius foot, here. Yeah. So, you know, actually what I'm going to do, so I have a 60 foot range. I'm going to cast it as far as I can towards the cave entrance. And so what that does, a 60 foot radius sphere of light spreads out from the point of range you choose. The sphere is bright light and sheds an additional 60 feet of dim light. So there's like 120 feet of light all of a sudden. Okay. Just, uh, up there as far as I can get it. This is a it has non-con. to be an effective object, an affected object. What? I think, hold on a second. No, 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 no. I just make a radius, uh, it says a 60 foot radius sphere of light spreads out from a point you choose within range. Oh, I think so any if, point, if, anywhere. You choose, if you choose a point on an object you're holding, then you can move it around. Yeah, this isn't like the light cantrip spell where you got to choose something. This is just any point wherever I look at. Okay. So, so, so here's how this works. Your, um, your brother, so you guys get out of the cave just in time, you get hit by rocks and you see floating in the air. This would be down. So 60 feet would be 40 yeah. feet down from you. So you don't actually see the point of light, but you see light like a bright light from from below the path off the mountain is emanating enough such that you guys are in the these additional dim light so you can now see on the plateau where you are however this light does not extend to where whatever is above is so you are now illuminated now we're gonna get be it. more targeted. Oh. <laughs> get out! Let's get out of let's there. Roll, let's roll. Let's roll because but, you need. But to I see. will say, but I will say, because you can see now, you can move at your full speeds down the path if you want to do that. 
So it is now uh, Shao's turn. Okay. And so do I sense Cho is outside the cave yeah, now? Yeah, you see him. I mean, okay. you can see each other now. You can I see go. the plateau, and you can see the path down. Let's let's mosey back because this is getting a little bit. Uh, okay, by mosey, cool. tell me, describe to me how you were moving and what level. Haul ass. Of <laughs> okay, he said, he so, said mosey equals haul ass. Yeah, in layman terms, uh, step of the wind. I will just go ahead and do that, and then just. Okay, out. so you move what ninety feet? Yeah, in six speed, seconds. In full speed. <laughs> yeah, so you're like. Whoa, and you just you like fly down the mountain path, uh, Cho. Yes, you're up. I'd like to use my cunning action to follow my brother. <laughs> you also move ninety feet down. The, you're you are you guys are like, like there's just sand and dirt flipping up. <laughs> We're like an anime cartoon. Just yeah, you're, you're <laughs> there's just like a trail of of trail dust. As you guys are, and and the closer or the further down you get, the brighter this light becomes, and you can now see this globe of incredible bright light, like bl almost blinding when you look at it directly, which you're not. You're focusing on hauling. Um, and in in turn, then, the waste. Um, Cade, you see your brothers now, and they're they're coming down the path, uh, and they're coming to the remains of the path cave in. Yeah. Um. I'm going to make two rolls mm -hmm. because 120 feet. Let's see. This is going to be so the first roll is at disadvantage because of range. Rip. A 10 misses. Uh, a medium sized, large watermelon shaped rock crashes down uh, like above where your brothers are running, mm -hmm. but misses. The second one. Uh oh. Even at disadvantage, that's a hit. 16 and a 16, so that's a 22. 1, 2, 3, Cho. 4, 5, 6, Shao. 4, 5, 6, Shao. Shao, you get hit with another watermelon boulder for 9 damage. Jeez. Uh, oh, now, both of you, good. you are hauling ass. You have to clear the difficult terrain rockfall. I will say that you need to make a acrobatics check to to basically parkour your asses over that. Acrobatics, huh? Uh, it could be athletics. Oh, Twenty-three. Okay. No, I'm good. Twenty-five. Okay. Acrobatics. So you, you guys are flying, right? And you 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 take a moment to kind of jump halfway up, you know, grab, flip roll and and continue running you make it down <clears throat> to the last 30 feet and now you're down uh at, at the level ground you're about 30 feet away from the base camp no more rocks are hailing down at you uh the light from the base camp uh or from your brother's spell has illuminated the entire base camp and the basin around it um uh, Mongozo, you see Mongozo running out from the darkness and and he has uh his his spear out and and you see he's like did you see them where did they come from where, i asked my brother the, the mine best we can tell they're on top of the mountain <coughs> uh how many hit points of damage did both of you take i took <laughs> i took 11 i'm out I mean, I'm like down to the right. nubs. Yeah, you need to be healed. Like I stat. mean, I'm down to three hit points right now, so I'm not going. Oh, shit. Wangozo, <laughs> Wangozo sees that you have been injured. He sees the bruising and the blood from these huge rocks hitting you. Uh, and and he, you see he closes his eyes and begins muttering a prayer in Borean. You are able to heal nine plus fours you you heal 13 hit points of damage uh is he within 60 feet of me well i'm assuming that they they ran back and all the way yeah, to the camp. yeah. Okay. so you're back inside yeah. of your perimeter camp <clears throat> so Juan yeah, I guess... is looking up and and he's like he's like they will not yeah. come down with that bright light i think at least i, I hope so i cast healing word at second level on shao Okay. Six, uh, 
You get another 10 hit points back. Um, Wangozo, Wangozo says, uh, we should nonetheless be ready. If any of the, the rocks come this way, these simple canvas tents will not suffice. And he, he looks at you, Kate, and he says, is there a way that you can dig into the earth to make tunnels, perhaps, with more than one way out? Because I would not want to be trapped on the ground. But yet, I think that maybe to have a tunnel to go inside of, if they begin to throw more of the boulders, would be a good idea. It's possible. It'll just take time. The... The light that I have uh, casted will last for an hour, so it's not going to last all night. He says, "We must, we must be vigilant. How long will that last? Do you think more than one hour or just one hour? Just an hour. Then we must set up torches. Uh, we, the men, should take watches, and everyone should have spears at the ready in case they come. Something long with reach." I feel that if any of these men were to engage the white furs in hand-to-hand -hand combat, it would not go well. They must be kept at a distance. If they... do, you have, do you have bowmen who can shoot arrows? I think we brought some bows, didn't we? Or yeah, did you have four. Them? Four of your four of your people can can decently shoot. <clears throat> if they if can they attack us tonight. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say there. There is no trees in the area where we're at. No, I don't the think so. You could, well, not near immediate base camp. You could go. You could trek back to the south towards the lake. Okay, but I mean, That's, within talking, within a hundred within like, hundred feet. No. Yeah. No. There's. Okay. You you would have to go at least a mile to the south. Yeah. Before you yeah. got to any kind of tree. Sure. Cover. I want my brother to cast dark vision on me, and I want to take my grappling hook and go back up the mountain. Oh, Juan Gozo looks at you. I and wouldn't, he, I wouldn't you advise crazy? that. No, they know we're here. It's only a matter of time. I'm yes, not splitting us up again. We need to be together. He, he says, remember that there is a reason why these mining operations stopped in the first place. And that was with many more men than what you have here. I think that you must be careful, my friend. Is your life really worth any amount of silver in that mine? I care not about the money. I want, well, I want revenge for my brother's injuries, but <laughs> what I really want to do is I want to take a beast out and send them a message that we will not be toyed with. You know that I am a hunter. I will help you, but... <laughs> We must think about how to wisely do this. Right now, we would not be hunting them. We are at a disadvantage. They are larger and stronger and more adept at climbing. They can apparently see at nighttime much better than we can. This puts us at a great disadvantage in this hunt. Do I would wait for a better time. Do you think that they are bothered by the light? If they've been living in the cave, then their eyesight may have been changed. The light may bother them, and the, and the, we could attack in the broad daylight. Perhaps. I do not know if these white furs are entirely nocturnal, but it would seem that they are smarter than just a simple beast because they waited until night time. However, also remember this. They did not come down and attack this base camp. It was only when you, and he points to both of you, when you went up to the mine. They seem not to be just simple beasts. They seem to have strategy. They seem to to be able to coordinate and they seem to be protecting that which they see as theirs i i, I look at cho i say i think doing anything right now it's going to be suicidal 
uh, let's, let's support the camp. Let's go ahead and allow Cade the time that he needs to create the tunnels as one goes and says to do. It sounds a pliable plan. And maybe perhaps during the daytime, we can set traps at our advantage and maybe trap them. Hopefully, maybe perhaps we can gain their scent and then perhaps elude them um, to use that as an, our vantage point to transverse up the camp and then maybe perhaps set a secondary camp with a tunneling system to this one and help us. But I don't see a head on war with these beasts uh, to be a positive ending for us because most of our men here do not have the experience that we do to evade certain attacks. And when they're going to be ex they're going to be exposed to a lot of pain and agony. So, when I wanted to Warm. learn of their intention, I was blocked at every turn. Everyone said they're setting traps for us. They have ill intention towards us. So, if their intentions are ill, then mine have become ill. I don't disagree with you, brother, but we can't see in the dark and yeah. even dark vision is going to limit us to the amount of vision we do have. So let's, let's fortify Mongozo, the camp. Mongozo, let's just... I, tomorrow morning, I will scout to the south. I, I will that well. Perhaps it would be a good idea to find a place where there is perhaps more access to trees, both for cover and for supplies. If yes. we were to build some kind of trap, it would need to be large. It would need to have significant amounts of, of sharpened wood stake that would be able to, to encase and Impale. protect uh, such a trap from being escaped. It okay. can be done, but I will need to gather a lot of equipment, supplies, uh, to use rope, to, Let us... to find some supple wood that has some flexibility for the trap. But I, I am proficient in the building and construction of traps. Yeah. Let us just get through the night and then we can we can formulate our plan in the morning for a trap. I will get a, a, a tunnel dug so we can have a means of uh, egress out of here in case we are attacked at night. And if they do attack us at night, I got something for them. I ain't going to like it. I look at you, Brother Cade, and I, and I ask, do we have any kind of way of explosives? Can we create explosives? You, have the you are aware of, in, in Sakura, you were aware of... Um, like firework type? Well, yeah, but like, like y you know that there are <clears throat> like alchemists who, who make... Um, you know, concoctions using different kinds of powders and liquids to make like, you know, explosive things <clears throat> for effect. You, you also know that in some circumstances, these things can be concentrated and used in, in efforts to do mining operations to, to blow up things as well. Um, you can I your understanding though, is that this is typically done by people who, who have like studied greatly and, and know carefully how to prepare these different concoctions. Um, and these alchemists are, you know, it, they're, they're, they're considered like highly skilled craftsmen, basically. Can I, can I gather the Iraqi, <clears throat> Iraqis and ask the question of, do we have anybody anywhere here on this island that can construct Obviously, they were mining here before. There must be somebody that used explosives. Maybe we can use these explosives to our advantage to set up a trap. All right. I'm going to have you make a D12 roll. Uh-oh. Just, just roll a D12. If your number comes within one number of the number that I roll, I'm going to say that one of your people has some kind of skill. One second. I will roll the that. The rarest of rolls ever. The random D12 matching roll. I rolled a two. <laughs> Are you serious? Yep. I rolled I a one. So, <laughs> oh. so, so here's what happens. You pull together your group. So Wangozo goes off 
to, to begin gathering like more wood to keep the fires going all night long. Um, and, and like, uh, you, you kind of are gathered around and, and your, your crew is, is, you know, they like, they demand to know what's going on. Right. They're, they're like, what, you know, what was all that sound and why were the brothers attacked and what was it? Did you see them? What did they look like? And they're, you're like murmur and lots of questions and stuff. <laughs> so the first thing that the, the first thing that you're going to do is, uh, because Cho, they, they see that you and Chow were both attacked. They, they heard the sounds. They saw that Cade created this magical light. They saw you guys hauling ass back down to the camp. So they, the group of them come over to you show and, and they're, they basically want, like, they, they need to be like appeased because right now they're really worked up. So what, what do yeah. you tell them? And like, how do you kind of pacify <clears throat> them or reassure them? Please friends gather around. I'm working in the background on the tunnel. Okay. I foolishly made a mistake and an error of judgment. I wanted to learn more about these beasts, so I took it upon myself and asked my brother to join me. My brother was quite injured. We do know one thing, though, from our tragic venture. They already were aware of our presence. They are setting traps for us as we speak on the distant side. They use the mountain to their advantage. They are not within the cave. They've caved in the cave, as a matter of fact. So there must be another, an alternate entrance, whether it be further up to the peak or on the other side. But we can't gain access to it, especially in the dark. And in my abrupt decision, I have... I have brought my brother very close to death and I will make up for that is my brother needs to get a, a rest before daylight and we will create traps for them and then we will attract them to us. Make a, uh, persuasion roll. With advantage, as, as you kind of explained all this in 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 your twenty four, in your honesty and your your tone, the 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 group of your your students, you, you see that their loyalty returns. They seem to be reassured, and almost uh, as, as well like empathetic, and and they they're kind of inspired, and they're like, "Do not lose face, Matt." Faith, Master Cho, we we will not we will not be scared away so easily by these beasts. We are with you. We we'll we'll be with you. And they they kind of nod and 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 kind of agree. And and as everyone's been calmed and Shao presents his question about explosives, one of the younger students, a Sakurin. Meekly raises his hand and he's like, my uncle, my, my uncle was a artificer. He, he made many uh, of these sort of things. I, I learned some of, of the craft from him. I worked in his shop. I was an apprentice to him for a time before my family came to Nicaea. He's like, I, I could try to make things if we could gather the right materials. And he, he kind of like nods. Um, the group basically then asks what you guys want to do in terms of like you know securing the camp setting up watches how you want to do that so you got 12 people decide you yeah. three shifts of four how do you want to do it are each one of you guys taking a separate shift 
Yeah, each of the brothers and Mongoza take one shift each. And, and then, then you the rest guys with e them. E yeah. equal guys. Yeah. Okay. So who's on first? Who's on first? I'll, I'll, I'll be the first. Okay, I'll roll a D20. La I'll be on last watch. Roll a D20. Tell me what your roll is. 20. Uh, 12. Okay. The first watch goes very smoothly. Everybody on your watch is very alert. Uh, for for the you know for a half an hour, you still have that super strong globe of daylight. Uh, you see it begins to fade in in the last few minutes, and then it kind of like winks out. Um, there's an adjustment of everybody's eyes as you now just have the moonlight and the light from several fires. Each of your guards have torches. They're kind of walking the perimeter, looking out. Um, and <clears throat> uneventful, your watch, there's no problems. You hear nothing. Um, White Eagle returns to your camp and he speaks with you directly. Um, he tells you that there are at least six white furs that he saw at different intervals, way higher up on the mountain. Um, he said there, there are two that have encamped on the Western side of the mountain with stacks of boulders and stones. Um, he said there are four of them who were on the south side of the mountain, and he thinks those were the ones that attacked you and your brother. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he thinks that there are more because he saw movement around the northern face of the mountain, but that the, they were climbing down. I question, from our vantage point here, how far up can we see? to the south side of the mountain how, how far because we're we're the south side so if we look straight up i mean we see daylight? it or is it no I, what i'm saying the yeah during the daytime yeah that's fine right so but so I mean, when you have when you have visibility you figure that the this mountain peak hits up to about 800 feet so where where the mine entrance was is is a you know kind of a fat wide part of this mountain is only a uh, hundred feet up. So there's a we lot have another more, 700. Yeah. There's a lot more mountain above and, and where he saw, where he saw them on the, the West and the South side, like where you guys were attacked and where they were stockpiling rocks, and boulders on the West side, that's only like 150 or 250, 200 feet up. So it's not that much further up from where you guys are, but mm -hmm. he said the rest of them that he saw were higher up. Right. He says and there are no, there are no paths up there because the the original mining expedition never yeah. excavated paths. He says if, yeah. okay. the only way to get up there would be to fly or climb. Yeah. Right. And there, there's two coming down. He said four. Yes. He said he said he said that the four there was the four that attacked you guys on the south side. Uh, yeah. Two of them that were stacked up on the west. And then two of them that were on the north face climbing down, and he okay. says they they can climb very easily. He's like yeah. they climb as easily as I fly, or yeah. as easily as you walk. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have to bring them to us. That's the way. He says too much they use advantage. all they use their hands and their feet to climb. Yeah. Okay. All right. Second shift, I guess. Second shift. Roll a d20. Right. Tell me what the result is. First, I cast Dark Vision on myself when I get up. Okay. And then I'll do that. I rolled a 17. All right. Uh, very uneventful. Um, while everybody else is, is getting their rest in, um, White Eagle tells you that he's his eagle needs to, to rest as well um okay. it it flies away from the camp <clears throat> back to kind of that, that outcropping that you originally found oh, okay. Um, okay. and and it it kind of hangs out over there uh third shift or do you want to do anything specific any light duty while you're on okay was third. i able to make the tunnels the tunnel i wanted yeah, I'll I'll say that you were able to do that during you know uh, during you know before the shift started and okay. then 
you okay. know, you could do a little bit of that. All, All right, right, third no, shift. Nothing. Go ahead and roll a d20. Uh, that'd be Mongozo. Oh, um, Mongozo. Okay, nothing. Last shift, roll a d20. 11. Really? All right. <laughs> so you're, you're feeling refreshed, right? You got your long rest in. It is. How much, how much did that recover for me? All of your hit points are back. Your, your, um, let me think of the orientation. Yeah. You, you basically see the sun rising, right? Most of, most of your people, um, other than the three, you know, students who are on your defense force, everybody else is asleep. Um, the students on your defense force, you know, two of them break off to keep the fire going and they, they get out like some of the breakfast stuff and the food and supplies. Um, as you are seeing the sun rise, you can kind of see a little bit more. Uh, of the surroundings around you and up the mountain. Make a perception check. And I'm also going to roll for two of your guys to see on average if they spot this. 17. Oh. All right. So one, one of your guys got a nat 20 on the perception check. So you're, <laughs> you're like on guard duty, right? And a couple of the guys are doing fires. One of your guys who kind of headed to the edge of, of the encampment and the trenches that Cade made, you, you see he comes running back towards you, like, and terror is on his face. And he's like, Master Cho, come, come quickly. I'll follow him. And, and he runs to the northern, like, point, and he ducks down behind a wall, and then he points up. And you see basically at where the plateau is, you know, like, oh, kind of to the northeast, right? Like you, you could see up the trail and where the trail hits the plateau and levels out from where you are, you can't see the mouth of the, of the mine entrance, but you could see the edge of that plateau, right? Of the landing. You see eight huge white furred beasts just standing in a line along the edge of that mountain looking down at your camp they don't have rocks in their hands or anything but they're basically just lined up looking at your camp and and your guy next to you is like master what do we do and that is where we'll end this episode of my adventure <laughs> Thanks for your patience, everybody. <sighs> we'll be back next week with another thrilling installment of this epic show. So make sure that you like and subscribe and click on that notifications bell so you don't miss another minute of the adventures of the Brothers Son. We will see you guys next time. Peace out. All the love. Well, hello, and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy, the wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.